Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about something in the Jurassic Park lore that I don't really see get talked about at all, and that would be Injun's plans and actual opportunities to clone extinct mammals for one of their Jurassic Parks. So it goes without saying that the prime asset that Injun valued the most was their ability to genetically engineer dinosaurs. This was the major focus of the book, all five movies, and of course every spin-off that was ever produced for the media franchise. And for good good reason. This was what the company and IP was always known for, and it's where the main focus was always directed. The Tyrannosaurus skeleton that's featured prominently on their logo signifies that exact mindset. However, contrary to popular belief, Injun did not always intend to stay in that lane, and they in fact had plans to develop new genetic assets that were far different from their scaly beginnings. The following information comes from the Mizrani Global website, which is an actual canon piece of Jurassic Park lore that helps tell us just what Injun was doing behind the scenes of the various movies. And in that website, there contains the following. The new engine facility, Martell, based in Siberia, has now opened. A rotating research team of nine scientists and an excavation crew of 45 persons will undergo 18 months of drilling at 42 glacial ice locations. The team hopes to find organic remains dating from 40,000 to 200,000 years ago. The state-of-the-art research base has been two years in the making and is believed to be situated over a group of woolly mammoths buried under the permafrost. This could potentially herald a new era of scientific discovery, helping us map out our natural history like never before. And I'm excited to finally see Martell on completion, expressed an excited Dr. Henry Wu, eager to add to Engine's ever-growing genomic library. So, from this information alone, we can gather that the company was actively seeking the development of new assets from different time periods outside of the Mesozoic. By the time we get to the events of Jurassic World, Simon Mizrani and Claire Deering were hoping for a boost in ticket sales with the unveiling of the Indominus Rex, which was of course the genetic hybrid that ended up destroying much of the resort on Isla Nublar. The company's efforts to expand upon the Jurassic brand went beyond dinosaur gene splicing though, and it should be noted that the company had a great deal of interest in locating extinct mammals for DNA as well. If we take a look at the investor's profile on the same website, we can see Simon Mizrani's fiscal year-end report for 2014, and it is here where we get even more information on Engine's interest in these creatures. Engine Technologies temporarily closed down two of its mines in Argentina to focus on its Martell expedition in Siberia, a move that has, so far, yielded an abundance of highly preserved carcasses. Despite the exciting finds, Dr. Henry Wu was held back on speculating whether Jurassic World might be including recreated assets from the Cenozoic era. Right now, we are focused on the construction of the world's most complete genomic library, Dr. Wu reiterated. But if the world tells us that's what they want to see, we're more than prepared. Now, obviously, with the fall of Jurassic World, the company never executed their plans for Cenozoic animals beyond the excavation of these carcasses. Had the company not been thrown into chaos by their own greed, though, it could very well have been possible that we would have seen animals such as the saber-toothed tiger or a aforementioned woolly mammoth taking part in some of Dr. Wu's experiments. And just to dive a little bit deeper into how much of an interest Engine took in Cenozoic clones, you needn't look any further than the movie series itself for evidence. If we go back to two films in the franchise, Jurassic Park and Fallen Kingdom, we can see some focus given to saber-toothed tigers specifically. In the original movie, John Hammond can be seen selling Smilodon plushies inside of the visitor center, and Benjamin Lockwood even has a skull of the animal on display in his massive home museum. So Jurassic Park has actually had its eye on this particular animal since the very beginning. Now, as far as prehistoric mammal cloning goes in an actual movie, I personally don't think it's something that anyone should be anticipating, mainly because I just think it's a little too vanilla for the franchise's core audience. If we're talking about whether or not the company could clone these animals, the answer is a resounding yes. If Dr. Wu was able to create dinosaurs from a process that would most certainly not work, then cloning woolly mammoths would be no problem. But I just don't think that this idea would really be too valuable for a mass audience. In my opinion, cloning extinct mammals isn't really as cool as cloning dinosaurs, and it's not as weird and creepy as cloning humans, the latter of which was something that Michael Crichton himself was very vocal about being afraid of. That being said, I totally think the idea of saber-toothed tigers in a Jurassic Park environment could make for a compelling story. I've even seen a really great fanfiction depicting Robert Muldoon hunting one down in Africa. But as far as the film canon goes, I don't think we should really expect to see this in Jurassic World 3. 
If anything, I think it's just a cool piece of JP lore that gives us some insight into how fascinating the world of genetics really is. But anyways, those are all just my own personal thoughts on the subject. What do all of you guys think? How do you feel about InGen's interest in obtaining DNA from extinct mammals? And do you think this was something that John Hammond and Benjamin Lockwood were considering during the early days of Jurassic Park? The evidence certainly suggests that there was something there. But hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear all of them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my InGen executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all even continue to watch these videos. And I want to thank each and every one of you for all of your continued support. Now, I'd like to thank all of you for watching this video and hope you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you on the next one, guys. And as always, take it easy.